morning. So my name is Ankur Bhaseen and I am a software developer manager in Enterprise Networking Group. And today I'm going to talk about next generation wireless controller, which will reinvent the wireless network. So let me introduce you to Catalyst 9800 wireless controller, which also represents Catalyst access expansion to wireless. So built from grounds up for intent-based networking, Catalyst 9800 is part of DNA center architecture. Now DNA center architecture is built on three pillars, automation, policy, and assurance. Now network automation translate your business intent into network policy and network assurance can capture the actionable insights back to the DNA center and gives you a granular visibility of your network. So 9800 comes in different form factors, uh, hardware appliance, a virtual machine running on private or a public cloud and also gets with a software package embedded on Catalyst 9300 switching platform. And I'm going to touch base all of these flavors later in my slides. Catalyst 9800 will support all Wave 1 and Wave 2 indoor access points and outdoor access points. <coughs> and whenever 11AX gets introduced, Catalyst 9800 will also support the same. So now let's quickly look at the wireless architecture for 9800. So it, uh, Catalyst 9800 brings together the decade of Cisco RF uh, excellence with all the innovative features what we have done on the most deployed Air OS controller, which includes client link, intelligent captures, uh, clean air, married together with the most modern and modular operating system, which is Cisco IOS XE, which provides high availability, programmability, and scaling. So when both brought together, we built this 9800 controller from grounds up with confidence for intent-based networking and can be deployed anywhere. So 9800 provides uh, the most flexible management options. For an example, 9800 Catalyst controller can be managed from DNA Center, can be also managed from Cisco Prime, and integrated very simple web UI. The CLI also, which is present as an iOS XE CLI, but because it is powered from iOS XE, which is open and programmable architecture, it can be also managed from NetConf and Yang models. So DNA Center will be able to manage it uh, with NetConf and Yang model. You can also use standard-based interoperability tools like uh, Puppet or Ansible to manage Catalyst 9800 controller because it has a NetConf and Yang models. And not only that, a custom development, which means that every single CLI which is present on Catalyst 9800 for configuring it is also can, has a corresponding NetConf and Yang model, which means you can use day zero to day one to day n network provisioning using a programmable interfaces. So now 9800 controller, as I said, it is powered by iOS XE. We built it on three pillars of network excellence, always on, secure, and deploy anywhere. Now let's understand why always on is so critical. So take an example of our healthcare customers, a minute of a downtime can result into roughly $3,000. So what about if they have to plan an upgrade and do that upgrade multiple times in a year and on multiple sites? May cost them hundreds and thousands of dollars. So what we are introducing with Always On is a seamless software update with hot patching, which means a network administrator can do a hot patch onto the controller and also an AP service pack onto an access point and can have a seamless software update with no network downtime. So I'm not updating APs and then waiting for him to come back, exactly. staring and praying. I'm not uh, uh, rebooting controllers and flipping them back and forth. Exactly. I'm not doing any of that anymore. Exactly. And I'm going to touch details or, or about even how... major code upgrades, not just minor iterations. Even, and that's the second thing which I was about to talk. We are introducing intelligent RF-based rolling AP upgrades, where even if you are upgrading the entire base image of a controller mm -hmm. and an access points, you can upgrade it with the hitless upgrades, hmm. with zero downtime. So you've you've decoupled AP version from controller version? Yes. Oh. And I'm going to touch base a little bit more about always on and go a little bit deep dive on that. Now, what we are doing is security. So security being on top of the mind, more and more traffic is getting encrypted. right? So it is very important to detect a malware into an encrypted traffic before even can bring down the network. So we are introducing encrypted traffic analytics on our 9800 controller also. 
which means any traffic which goes to the wireless LAN controller in a centralized wireless deployment, we can implement ETA on that traffic. You can implement what? Encrypted traffic analytics. Ah. So which means that we can, I'll, I'll go touch base deep onto the ETA in the next couple of my slides. And within automated uh, macro and micro segmentation with software defined access, we can also have security applied at an access layer itself. And then deploy anywhere, we also understand that customers are looking for a flexibility where they can deploy the way they want and can also expand the wireless network. So we are giving an option to deploy it on-prem, on private and public cloud, <coughs> and also as a software package on an embedded switch. So now let's go a little bit deep dive on the three network pillars of excellence as I was talking before, always on, secure, and deploy anywhere. So what we are doing in always on? So now, always on for an unplanned and planned outages. So we all are aware of unplanned outages where a device or network interrupts can happen in the network. If that happens, we have stateful switchover where AP and client database is synced from active to standby controller, and there is no downtime when the network uh, failures or device failure happen, and then we will also support N plus one high availability. But what we are doing more on top of it with power of iOS XE, we are doing an infrastructure updates, which means a software maintenance updates can be given onto the controller and can also be applied to an access point without even rebooting the controllers. And then with software image upgrades, as I said, if you want to upgrade the entire controller image or an access point, we can do it with intelligent rolling AP upgrades based on an RF, and I'm going to show you how it will happen. So first, let's look at unplanned events. So as I said, unplanned event means something can happen onto your network which means your AP and client database has been synced. When your AP and client database is synced, the states are also synced. Now that results in always on network where AP continues to stay up and running. Your always on services, which is voice, video, and data services stays up because we have synced the database and we have synced the state. And always on client, where users and client will always stay connected if any downtime happens in your network. Now in case if any downtime happen on the device, we still, because we have synced the database, again, APs and client will always stay up. So this is what we call as active and standby stateful switchover. Now this is what we are introducing new with Catalyst 9800 controller, as I was discussing, seamless software-based updates on the infrastructure. So what's going to happen today? In today's wireless network, in case, let's say, you hit some issue on your controller, what happens is you go to the TAC, TAC reaches out to engineering, and then we come up with a new engineering image, or maybe a MR image. And then customer plans for an upgrade, they upgrade the entire controller, and all the access point get an image from the controller. And that brings a downtime into your network. Now what we are doing is, we are doing a soft, with a hot patching, we will give you a patches, and patches can be applied onto the controller. Once you apply a patch onto the controller, the base image never gets upgraded. The access point never gets upgraded, and network can always stays up. What we are doing on, on top of it is we are introducing an AP service pack. So let's take an example of you have a wave one access point or you have a wave two access points, and you are hitting some issue on your wave one access point. Today what we do is we upgrade the entire controller, and again all the APs get upgraded. With AP service pack, you will get a pack onto the controller, controller intelligently will be able to find this service pack is for which AP models, and we push that service pack onto the access point, which means only that access point which needs that pack will get update, and rest of the access point and the controller will not get upgraded. So it will be a seamless software update onto the controller or onto the access point. And on top, what we are introducing is AP device pack. So for an example, today you want to introduce a new access point onto the network. What do we do? We upgrade the, again the entire controller and the access point get upgraded, and then only new AP models can join the controller. With an AP device pack, you will be able to put that pack onto the controller, and any new AP models which gets introduced, for an example, tomorrow 11AX, will be able to join the controller without upgrading your controller and without upgrading the rest of the access point in the network. Now. Could you also use that to increase backwards compatibility? By backward compatibility means that go back to it and join the old image? No, 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 old APs joining new controller. I mean, 
we retire. We, we have that huge matrix of access points, controllers, and software versions. Mm -hmm. Would this allow you to maintain much more uh, backwards compatibility with older access points through the new software revs? That's right. So we will start supporting only 11 wave 1 and wave 2 access point with this controller, which means older AP, which is 11AN, will not be supported on Catalyst 9800. But more and more new AP which comes in, you can just make it join the controller without waiting for the new software image or upgrading the entire controller on an access point. I have a question here. Um, because I'm an old call manager guy. And this looks like what we used to do with phone software loads, mm -hmm. where we can issue a firmware update for a phone and not ha it has to be independent of call manager's platform itself. But I also know that that was a huge pain in the neck when it came times to do things like controller upgrades, because then we had to be on specific firmware revisions for the access or for the phones before we could do those upgrades. Are you guys learning anything from the communications manager BU about how to prevent those kinds of problems, because I can think of a couple of wireless people that'll be watching this thinking to themselves, I just got out of this mess with, with call manager, and now I'm getting right back into it with wireless. So what we are doing it is, right, uh, for an example, a new AP model has to join your controller, right? And let's say, let me take an example, you are running 16.10 software version on your controllers and the rest of the access point. Now a new AP model which comes in is supported in 16.11, right? So what we will do is we will have N minus two image which will support the new AP models or the next MD release, which means that even without going to 16.11 on your controller and an access point, you can load a AP device pack onto the controller and new AP models, which is supposed to be supported in 16.11, will be able to join an existing 16.10 controller. Will not give you 16.11 features, but will be able to give you all 16.10 features. But most importantly, can join the controller and be used. Exactly. So if you don't necessarily get all the features, I get that, but that, that's a struggle. I mean, I agree with, with Ryan. That, that's a pain with customers that have a thousand access points and have the budget to replace half of them and you're running you know, this model and this model and you have to choose a happy middle and then they, weird stuff happens. That's, that's a real pain. Exactly. Yeah, so this will solve that. Exactly, and that will solve it. On top of it, that whenever you introduce new AP models, many a time it happens, right? You have not planned for your network upgrade. You are just introducing a new AP model and you want them to join. Once it joins, it's giving you a 16.10 features. And when you plan the network upgrade, you can do an intelligent RF-based rolling AP upgrades, which will again bring no downtime into your network and still be able to get you 16.11 and all the new features. But till that time, you are able to make a new AP model join without planning a forceful upgrade into your network. So to sort of elaborate on Tom's question there with the device packs, is that going to be specific to that new AP model yes. or like the call manager scenario where a device pack actually contains firmware for the entire breadth of endpoints and you may inadvertently also upgrade some devices that you didn't mean to. No. No? So even the so let me give an example of a hot patch for the controller, AP service pack for an existing AP and an AP device pack for the new AP models will be for those particular issues and access point and the AP models. And when you load it onto the controller, controller intelligently find it out from that pack. This is for what kind of AP models or what kind of AP which is having a problem. So only those APs will get that update automatically. So now let's talk about if you plan to upgrade the entire controller image or the entire access point, how you can do it. With an intelligent RF-based rolling AP upgrade, there is no manual intervention needed. So let me take an example of, you have two controllers here one running version X, and you have another controller which is N plus one, which you can upgrade it to version X plus one. All your access points have joined version X on controller which is your primary controller serving the clients. Everything is good till here. Now what you plan is you plan an upgrade. So before you plan an upgrade, you can define how many percentage of access point you want to get upgraded in your network. By default, we are picking 15%. You can move to 5% or 25% if you want to be more aggressive. Once you do that, automatically based on an RF, the access point will intelligently find it out which access point, let's say a 5% or a 15% access point, which are those access points in your network should be upgraded. And then those access points will also find the neighbor's access point which will be safe. So I know this is an access point which is getting upgraded. It will define all the safe neighbor lists next to them and it can start steering the clients onto those neighboring APs and automatically start moving the access point back to the 
or not back, it should start going to the N plus one controller. So slowly access point will keep moving, get reloaded and come up with a new image and we have already steered the client to the neighboring APs which are safe. And slowly all the access point will move back, move to the new controller and get upgraded to N plus one version with no downtime in your network. I mean, we already do this with mobility groups now, just like this. So what's the advantage then? The, um... Today, no, so today what you do it is, when you have a mobility group today, right, if right. you want to upgrade your access point, how do you define which access point has to be moved? So there is no manual intervention needed. Yeah. So what innovation we did it is, based on an RF, we have a complete RF neighbor relationship, which access point is serving how many clients, which are the neighboring APs, which are safe, for an example, I will start picking up an access point which has no client first. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's definitely manual now. And that's it, exactly what we do. This is all automated Same today now. Decision, so. so access point will automatically find out I have no clients or a minimum number of clients. I will pick that access point, find out the neighbors which are safe to me, and I can start steering the clients automatically to those neighbors. When I have no client on my access point, I will start moving my access point to the controller. And now the first controller will be intelligent, <coughs> finding out that access point has gone, get upgraded, and then only I will start the next access point. So the mobility messages are exchanged when the APs on the new controller are completely ready and able to take the new clients. And then only I will start moving the rest of the access point slowly back to the new controller to get upgraded. And previous clients are coming back to the old access points, right? My yeah, so, so for the clients what matters is, right, which is the access point which can serve me. Once the clients are steered to the access point which are safe, and I move my access point to the new controller getting it upgraded, these clients will stay on to that access point. And when these access points get upgraded, and if my client feels that I'm getting a better signal and power level from these access points, client automatically can roam back to this access point. I'm just curious, how about if an access point doesn't receive the upgrade properly, fails? No, so what we have also done it is, for an example, let's say you define 15% of an access point should get upgraded. Let's take an example, you have 100 <coughs> access points in your network and only 15 access points are moved. <coughs> Unless and until those 15 access points get upgraded onto the new controller, it will keep re-attempting. Okay. And it gives two or three extra attempts. When the access point get upgraded, a mobility act message is sent back to the primary controller that all the access points are upgraded and ready to serve the client and then the remaining 15% starts moving. And then you will upgrade your previous controller which was a primary back to X plus one version and now both the controllers are running the same version. Now it depends on you if you want to move your access point back to the primary controller or leave it on to the secondary controller which is already serving the APs and client. But in case if you decide to move your access point back to the primary controller, again in the same fashion of that RF intelligence, access point will slowly move back to the primary controller with effective no dime on to the clients and, an access and your network. Now let's talk about security. Security as I said, top of the mind, right? And more and more traffic is getting encrypted. We are introducing encrypted traffic analytics on Catalyst 9800 wireless <coughs> controller. ETA was already present on all 9K switching platform where we used to do it at an access layer. Now we have introduced the same thing on 9800 wireless controller. So as you know, there are three kinds of deployment in wireless network. A centralized wireless traffic, where the wireless traffic goes back to 9800 controller, that is where you can apply ETA. It will look at all the encrypted traffic and attach a metadata and send it in a NetFlow telemetry <coughs> to the StealthWatch cloud. And a StealthWatch cloud will be able to find that if there is any malware with an algorithm or a machine learning running onto the StealthWatch and give you enhanced visibility, it will give shortened time to response before even a malware hits and bring your network down. Now, SD access on 9800. So you all must be knowing that SD access, which we call it as a fabric, which was already present on our existing AOS controller. So what are we doing new with 9800 SD access? So as I said, 9800 controller is based on iOS XE. Now the entire network stack, your routers, your switches, and your wireless controller supports the same OS, which means customer need not worry about certifying a separate OS for your wireless and separate OS for switch and separate for switches and routers. Once you certify your base OS image, the same image runs on all the platforms, which is a switch, a router, and a wireless. So you get the same consistent experience 
on the switches, on the routers as well as the wireless controllers. And now you can get true multi-site wireless fabric. By that what I mean is you can deploy a hardware appliance or a virtual appliance on the bigger sites and get the fabric. And on the distributed sites, you can apply wireless with a software package on the 9300s. So is AeroS going away? No, so investment on AeroS will continue and we will keep innovating features on top of it. Once we know that our next generation wireless controller is adapted in the field okay. and then always a new platform which comes in take a year or two yeah. to get adapted and that is where we plan and decide at that time what, do, what is our strategy for AeroS controller. But that but is as of, long term. Yes, so. but as of today the AeroS investment will continue but we'll make for so that every hardware. I'm sorry. For the existing controller. Yes, line. for the existing controller. What's what's the feature parity like? Mm. So the entire feature which is present on our AeroS controller till 8.8 .8 release, which has just gone on to the CCO, will also be available from the day of first day of launch. Okay. So I remember when there was another wireless controller based on you know iOS XE, and that was a problem. You know the, the 5760, <laughs> and uh, it, that was. Missing a lot of features, and that's not the case now, though. Exactly. Now, if you notice, right, 57... I don't care about the GUI or anything like that. I mean, I care about it, but what I mean is as far as the features. Like, right? Absolutely. And the so, capability. So if you notice 5760, right, it was a platform which was supporting a converge access as an architecture. Converge access was one of the architecture which was supported by two platforms, 5760 and 3850. Yeah. So we have three major architectures in wireless. A centralized wireless, where AP is in a local mode. You have a flex connect architecture and you have a fabric. So we are continuing our architecture on the new platforms. So there is no change in an architecture. Converge Axis was a completely different architecture which was missing a feature parity, a complex MCMA tunnel. But our architecture remains the same, a centralized wireless, flex connect, fabric on a next generation platform with feature parity, with the management, as I said, from the web UI, from Cisco Prime, from DNA Center and scale. And I'm going to touch base on the different flavors. You will be able to realize what all we are doing on our platforms yeah. and different form factors. I think one of the things was that at the time, it was really helpful to have something that was mid, mid range. You know how like when you have cars, you have like a economy car, you know, some company, then they make one for the mid market and then the expensive luxury car. It was good to have something that accommodated a few hundred APs and whatever that was, a thousand APs, and then you can get the 8,500 if you, but there was a cost associated with that. Yes. So you can sell that to a, a medium sized business. You know, is that going to be an issue where I have to sell uh, a customer, a, the, the entire fabric and huge controllers? I mean, I'm, I don't know how this is going to play out. In that. Exactly. And let me touch base with you all the form factors. What we are going to introduce in 9800, you will be able right. to realize the yeah. different scale. Okay. We are bringing up with different platforms. So as I said, SD access now will be present everywhere with wireless running on the switch wireless running on a private cloud, and wireless running on an appliance. In AeroS, we used to only support it on an appliance, but now the virtual form factor, and we will also run the software package 9800 on a switch where you can enable wireless for SD access. So quickly to show you deploy anywhere. Now this is a flexibility, what we will be providing to our customers. You have a various options to pick and choose from, starting from a switch where you can run 9800 Catalyst software package for embedded wireless. You can go up to 200 APs and 4000 clients. You can deploy on a private and public cloud. That means the same virtual, same software which is running on a 9K as a Catalyst 9800 software package and on an appliance will also be run on a private cloud on KVM, ESXi, and also on Cisco ENCS. And also will be available on AWS Marketplace. And I'm again going to touch base a little bit detail about what we are doing on private and public cloud. And then we can go up to 2,000 access point on an appliance 9840, 3,000 access point on a private cloud. And if you want to further expand network to 6,000 APs, 64,000 client, you can go to private cloud on KVM and ESXi, and also on 9880, which is our next generation bigger platform. And are the features the same on each platform like it is now, pretty much? Exactly, so what we did is we did a feature consistency Yep. What we also did is uh, deployment consistency, which means the centralized, the flex connect, and also a fabric will be supported on all the form factors if the architecture allows for that. For an example, on 9300 90, switching platform, we will only support fabric enabled wireless. But features remain the same. Yep. 
So now let me quickly go through the various form factors to show you what all we are introducing with Catalyst 9800. Catalyst 9800 wireless controller will introduce an appliance. To show you how the appliance look like a front panel, this is 9880 industry's first modular wireless controller with 100 giggy uplink. So if you notice here, there is a modular uplink which can have different uh, uplink interfaces, a 1 giggy, 10 giggy, 40 giggy and 100 giggy. We are also introducing with a fixed 8, 10 gig fiber optic modules where you can get 80 Gbps of throughput and a dual power supply and can support up to 6000 APs and 64000 wireless clients. A smaller version of it which will support 2000 APs and 32000 wireless clients and up to 40 Gbps of throughput. It again has 4 fixed interfaces for, for 10 gig interfaces it can go up to 40 Gbps. We are also introducing for an AP which will be a fiber port also. Before we used to have an RP for active and standby neighborship only on an ethernet, we are also introducing an RP interface for fiber uplinks. But it still serves the same purpose. Exactly. It's the same thing. Yes, fiber. but now you can extend using a fiber connectivity in case if you don't have ethernet on your data centers. Yeah, okay. Now let's quickly discuss what we are doing for the cloud. So the same software image which is running on an appliance will also be running on a private cloud. By private cloud, I mean is that you can install it on an ESXi, on a KVM, or as an NFVIS on Cisco ENCS. It will be supported from DNA Center for automation and assurance, and can scale up to 6,000 APs and 64,000 wireless clients, even on your virtual machine. And we will support all the deployment model, which includes centralized wireless, flex connect, and fabric. So a lot of innovation, we did it on our virtual footprint, and in AeroS, we never used to support this bigger scale and different deployment modes. But our next generation Catalyst 9800 for the private cloud, we will support all the deployment modes, scale up to 6,000 APs and 64,000 wireless client. And you can also use this virtual controller as a guest anchor, controller in your network. About multi-tenancy. So multi-tenancy can be, multi-tenancy is in the roadmap, which we are planning to introduce. But today you can do it with the site tag concept, the way we have an AP group concept on our AeroS controller, on next generation controller, we are coming up with more modular configuration. The way we have MQC QS based configuration, you will also have a modular configuration where you can configure site tags, a policy tag, map those together to an access point, and you can still do multi-tenancy. What we are doing for the public cloud is, we will also have the same software, Catalyst 9800, available on AWS Marketplace. You can go and search for Catalyst 9800 wireless controller, you will be able to find a 9800 controller listed on the marketplace, you will be able to instantiate your virtual machine onto the cloud. It will support up to 1,000 access point and 10,000 wireless client and will only support flex connect local switching. And the reason for that is when traffic enters the cloud, you don't have to pay, but when traffic exits the cloud, you have to pay for that. So the architecture which makes sense is flex connect local switching where your data traffic locally stays in your branches or your head office. Only the control plane is managed from the controller sitting it onto the cloud. So your image management, your config management can be done for the controller sitting in AWS and your APs are sitting on your branches. Is it the or, flex connect we have now? In, or is it missing compared to local, you know, that kind of thing, missing features? All the features which we have on a local mode other than an ETA, for an example, ETA we are doing it on a controller because traffic had to hit the controller. Yeah, yeah. But ETA can be done on an access layer switch if you have 9300 where APs are connected on flex connect. So now coming to uh, last flavor where 9800 as a software package can be installed on 9300. So what we are doing is if you have a fabric deployment and you have a border node, you can enable wireless on top of it. And once you enable wireless on top of it, the fabric edges AP can be connected and join your controller which is now running as a software package embedded on 9300 base OS image. And then for a smaller branches, you can have Catalyst 9800, you can deploy fabric in a box, and APs can be directly connected to it. So a complete scalable distributed fabric SDA solution with Catalyst 9800 as a software package running onto the 9300 switch. This is dependent on the distributed campus fabric that is coming, right? This is not available today? Yes, so this is getting launched as a part of our 16.10 release. Multi-site fabric is already supported. You need to have an extra hardware appliance to support a wireless. Now with Catalyst 9800 software package, you can install it on the existing 9300 switch and wireless functionality will be enabled onto the switch itself. 
It supports up to 200 access point and 4000 client per wireless controller which is running on a switch. And if you have two border nodes, you can enable wireless on both and can go up to 400 APs and 8000 client in that branch. So just give me two minutes, just want to show something last, which is how you can interoperatable with the existing AOS controller in your network. So we also understand that you may not be able to upgrade the entire network with one shot, but if you have an existing AOS controller and the Catalyst 9800, you can interoperate now with your AOS can be upgraded to 8.8 MR2, and you can have a seamless roaming between a network deployed on Catalyst 9800 <coughs> and a network deployed on AOS controller. And the last thing before I end is, even if you have a guest anchor solution and your AROS, which is one of your anchor point is running your network as a guest anchor, you can have upgrade to 8.8 MR2 and you will be able to form a guest anchor tunnel from the 9800 also from your existing AROS controller. Which means if some of your sites have AROS, can form a tunnel to the guest anchor running 9800 and some of, and 9800 in some of your sites can form a tunnel to your existing AROS controller and you can get guest anchor interoperability. And the last thing before I end is a config migration. Now what happens to your AROS configurations? Because now we are moving to iOS XE, the CLI format will be different. So what we did is with the three different management tools, for an example, DNA center, you have already discovered Catalyst 9800. You have, uh, sorry, your AROS controller, you have already done a design and policy you just discover Catalyst 9800, all the configurations and the design and the policy what you did will also be get pushed to your 9800 without touching the network, without redesigning the network. We are giving a prime infrastructure where you can discover and use your existing templates and configure 9800 without changing your exist existing templates which has configured AOS. And the last thing is integrated web UI. We are integrating a tool on the web UI where you click on it, import your AOS configuration, it will export your configuration which can go on 9800, you click on apply and the config gets applied onto the controller. So very seamless migration from an existing AOS to Catalyst 9800 controllers. With this, thank you so very much. In case if you have any questions, maybe I can answer those. I have lots of questions. Sure. <laughs> um, so you said that you're going to have a, an API that does NetConf and Yang. Um, are we going to have full access to that API or is it only for configuration? No, you will have a full access for an OPER data as well as the config data. So you will be able to configure, which means you can provision and you can also read, even if you don't have a management tool using a NetConf and Yang model. So even OPER data is available and exposed out. Okay, but we don't just have like a RESTful JSON API? So, so we have a plan to introduce a RESTConf interface also, but yes, the JSON interface is also present. Okay. All right, and will the API have 100% or greater feature parity with the CLI? Exactly, and just to give you an example, the, we have deployed the Catalyst 9800 in our existing live network, in our building 18, and the entire configuration was done using a NetConf and Yang model. Okay. Um, what new or existing features on this platform are gonna require DNA Center? So there is no mandate to have a DNA center to manage your Catalyst 9800 controller. But if you want to deploy Fabric, which is SDA, we always recommend to use DNA center. So only for a Fabric, you need to have a DNA center. But without Fabric, if you want to deploy a centralized wireless network or a Flex Connect, you can use it without DNA center, either Prime or a Web UI or integrated. But there's not gonna be any, any features no. or check boxes that if I don't have DNA center, no. it's not gonna work, okay. All the features are present onto the Catalyst 9800 without DNA center also. All right, and I assume that it's iOS XE, so all of these wireless services are running containerized inside. Um, are we ever going to see a Kubernetes pod where we can just deploy that? Can, can you come again with the question? Uh, a Kubernetes pod or something like that, containerized, instead of deploying a VM to AWS, can we have our hybrid cloud and deploy our services as we wish? Yeah, so, so what we did is with Catalyst 9800, the entire software module is very modular. It's not running in a container, but for an example, the RRM is running on a RRM manager, or a mobility is running on a mobility manager. So they are independent modules, but they are not the containers into an iOS XE. 
Okay. So although they are modular, they don't depend on each other. For an example, we have a process where something happens on your RRM, mobility will not be impacted. Something happens on your mobility, your guest anchor will not be impacted. So it's very modular, but they are not yet container. Okay. And uh, were there any lessons learned from Converge Access that were carried over and, and addressed directly with this? So if you notice, right, the Converge Access, again, I said, was an architecture. It was not a platform. It was supported on two platforms. It was lacking features. It was lacking manageability. It was lacking an architecture where you can have a seamless transition. Well, it lacked a lot of stability, too. With Catalyst 9800, if you notice, we have a feature parity with the latest release which we just launched on AOS. We have a manageability story where we are manageable from DNS Center, Prime, Web UI, open and programmable interfaces. And as I showed you the innovations, what we did for always on and secure and deploy anywhere, the flexibility of deploying a software on either an appliance or a virtual machine, and the scale. If you notice, the Converge Access was not able to scale, and we are scaling up to 6,000 APs and 64,000 clients, even on a virtual machine. And on top of it, the stability we have deployed from last six months, this Catalyst 9800 controller in the entire building with no backup SSID on the AOS controller, which means if your network goes down, you go home. So the entire building is running on the Catalyst 9800 controller, and we did multiple EFTs with our customers in production network where we have got a very good feedback. And this, I mean, this is a complete rewrite. There's no, this isn't AeroS ported over. It's built from grounds up with confidence. Everything is written from the scratch, using all the features which were available on iOS XE and taking all the excellence what we already have in AeroS.